Hello everyone. This is our first lecture for Chapter 7, Four Distributions. Here are the learning objectives for Chapter 7. This is what we're going to go over, and this is what you will need to know for the next proctored quiz. Think of these learning objectives as your roadmap through the chapter and your study guide for the next quiz. So take a minute, hit the pause button, and read through these. In this lecture video, we will take a look at the four essential distributions in statistical analyses. We will review the characteristics of the normal and standard normal distributions. We will introduce the family of T distributions. In the second lecture video, we will introduce F distributions and the chi-square distributions. In previous lectures, we discussed that normal distributions are very important to inferential statistics. All normal distributions are symmetric around its mean mu. They form bell-shaped curves with area equal to 1. They also are unimodal because their mean equals their median equals their mode. Remember that with normal distributions, most scores are clustered around the middle of the distribution with fewer scores out towards the tails. Raw scores in a distribution can be converted to z-scores, representing standard deviation units by dividing the difference between the raw score and the distribution's mean by the standard deviation, or by dividing the difference between the sample mean and the distribution's mean by the standard error. Converting raw scores to z-scores allows us to standardize any normal distribution. The z-score distribution is the standard normal distribution, which always has a population mean mu equal to zero and a population standard deviation sigma equal to one. The standard normal distribution allows us to compare scores from different tests, and it allows us to calculate the probabilities associated with the scores. In the previous chapter, we used the standard normal table to determine probabilities associated with z-scores. Remember, small probabilities indicate that z-score is highly unlikely or an unusual event. The smaller the probability, the more unlikely the score is. The smaller the probability, the further away the score is from the mean. Another way to separate usual from unusual events is to look at critical values. Critical values are the boundaries that cut off or separate what is, what is considered a usual event from what is considered an unusual event. For z-scores, we can use the standard normal table to determine probabilities. For t distributions, f distributions, and chi-square distributions, we use critical values to determine the likelihood of getting a particular score or a, or a particular sample mean. Graphing calculators and computers can determine the actual probabilities for these distributions. For the purposes of our class, we will be using critical values to construct confidence intervals, which are discussed in Chapter 8, and to test hypotheses, which are discussed in Chapter 9. The T distribution is a family of distributions that look almost identical to the normal distribution. The T distribution is flatter and has thicker tails than the normal distribution. The T distribution is used instead of the normal distribution when you have smaller sample sizes, 
usually less than 30, and or the population standard deviation sigma is unknown. The larger the sample size, the more the t-distribution looks like the normal distribution. For sample sizes larger than 30, or n greater than or equal to 30, the t-distribution is almost like the normal distribution. For sample sizes at infinity, n equal to infinity, the t-distribution is in fact the standard normal or z-distribution. Each t-distribution is defined by its degrees of freedom, which are determined by its sample size, n minus 1. The characteristics of the t-distribution are as follows. It is unimodal and symmetric around its mean. It has a population mean mu equal to 0, and a population standard deviation sigma greater than 0. However, remember that as degrees of freedom approaches infinity, population standard deviation sigma is equal to 1, like the standard normal distribution. The value of the t statistic ranges from negative infinity to positive infinity. It is bell-shaped, however, its shape depends on sample size n. As sample size increases, the shape approaches the shape of the standard normal or z distribution. When degrees of freedom, or df, equal infinity, the t distribution exactly matches the standard normal or z distribution. The next video lecture we will discuss the last two distributions, f distributions and chi-square distributions.